Hell's Kitchen has been home to some of the most intense and epic chef meltdowns ever recorded. And these moments are a testament to the show's high pressure environment. In season 13, episode 10, something really exciting happened. Two chefs on the same team, Bryant Gallagher and Aaron Lehman, got into a big argument. It all started after the blue team did a really bad job during dinner time. They had to decide who to send home. Bryant was feeling really upset. He didn't want to be blamed for the team doing badly. He said he wasn't going to be nice anymore. Then Aaron did something that made Bryant really mad. He said Bryant should be the first person to maybe go home. You can see how angry this made Bryant. Oh, get away. Not the blue team. Bryant got really upset with Aaron. He said Aaron didn't listen to him during the cooking. Aaron said he wasn't as organized as another chef named Sai Edi. This made them start arguing even more. Raw pork! Undercooked lamb! Then Aaron did something else that was kind of funny. He said another chef named Fernando should maybe go home too. And you know what reason he gave? Safe services. So, okay. It was a really silly reason. As everyone kept arguing, Sai Di tried to make everyone calm down. Aaron then did something really brave or maybe a little crazy. He told the blue team to pick him to go home. He said he would survive anyway. It's like daring someone to push you off the swing because you're sure you'll land on your feet. Aaron also said something mean about Bryant. He said Bryant couldn't be a big boss chef because he had a bad attitude. This made Bryant really, really angry. In the end, the blue team picked Aaron as the first person who might go home, and Bryant as the second. When Aaron had to tell Chef Ramsay why he should stay, he said he was strong and a good leader. And guess what? Just like Aaron said earlier, he didn't get sent home. He was right about surviving. It's like when your friend says they can eat a whole pizza by themselves, and they actually do it. This whole story shows how stressful it can be on a cooking show. Sometimes the chefs get so worked up, they forget they're there to cook and not to argue. Next up is the heated moment in season 12, episode 14. This is where sous chef Andy completely lost her cool on a disrespectful chef. Let me paint the picture for you. Anton was in serious trouble after completely botching his Wellingtons. Things went from a slow simmer to a full-on boil, and Andy jumped in to handle the mess. I mean, it's one thing to mess up, but to mess up Wellingtons in Hell's Kitchen? That's practically a crime in the culinary world. But instead of owning up to his mistakes and working on them, guess what Anton did? Next door is oven, I got it down pat, this one I screwed it up. Excuses, excuses, and more excuses. I mean, really? That doesn't exactly scream maturity, experience, and intelligence in the kitchen, does it? If there's one thing that drives chefs up the wall, it's when someone can't take responsibility for their actions. I found it absolutely ridiculous. Can you imagine how Chef Andy reacted to his lackluster performance? I've told them it's 14 minutes. Oh, did you catch that? Andy was definitely not putting up with it. She has seen her fair share of excuses and bad attitudes and she was ready to shut it down. She was all set for a showdown, but Anton just couldn't keep his attitude in check. Don't think I'm gonna let some little girl get in my face. Things got seriously heated with his mentor, and it was a total disaster. It's always a bad idea to get into a shouting match with a sous chef, especially one as formidable as Andy. While Andy was barely holding on to her patience, the moment came when she completely lost it. I was just saying that this way I was Shut up, stop talking back. Oh yeah. Andy unleashed all her pent-up anger. Honestly, it was a sight to behold. If there's one thing you don't want to be on the receiving end of, it's an angry Andy. Picture Andy marching right up to Anton, getting inches from his face and unleashing a scream that could wake the dead. I don't know how you imagined it, but in reality, it was pure chaos. Don't you fucking talk back to me! Don't you ever I'm talk back to me! Back. And you know what? Sometimes that's exactly what the kitchen needs. A clear, loud, and unmissable message. And trust me, that commanding yes chef probably echoed in the next town over. 
the Shut up and say yes, chef! Yes, chef! Anton should have just taken his lumps and moved on. But no, he had to make it worse with his back talk. Andy wasn't having any of it, and she let him know in no uncertain terms. Honestly, it's moments like these that make Hell's Kitchen such a thrilling show. Watching chefs crumble or rise under pressure is what keeps us glued to the screen. Sometimes, chefs on the show get so angry they almost hit Ramsay. You can dish it, but you can't take it! Hey, madam! Oh, that means you That's pretty scary, isn't it? Now, here's a funny thing. Sometimes, when a chef argues with Ramsay, it actually turns out okay. Let's talk about Tanil. She got really mad at Ramsay during one of the cooking challenges. She was tired of him always complaining about how much food she was making. So she decided to yell back at him. This all happened in season six during the sixth dinner service. Tanil was in charge of making the side dishes. And guess what she did that made Ramsay really mad? It's to keep the momentum going. Tanil, what's all this spinach for? Yeah, she cooked way too much spinach. Ramsay got really upset about this. But then he said something that really hurt Tanil's feelings. Wake up! Yes, chef. Wake up! Yes, chef. Cook the spinach to order, you lazy cow. It wasn't very nice at all. Tanila got so upset that all she could say was a short response. Chef Ramsay needs to learn how to show up some respect. She was trying hard not to get too angry. You can understand why Tanila was so upset, right? She thought Ramsay was being mean when she was working really hard. It's like when you clean your room and your parents still say it's messy. Tanila knew she made a mistake by cooking too much spinach. But Ramsay kept saying mean things to her, which just made her more and more angry. Yeah, rabbit food. Fuck you. Then things got even worse. Do you want to see what happened to the mashed potatoes Tanili made? Portions of mash, look at that. Just that, that's the way I get treated. You can see that they're stuck to the pot, and there wasn't even enough for two people to eat. Tanil had something funny to say about this mess. I can't believe it. Yeah, I take something up to the ass, it's too much. Even when things are going wrong, sometimes you just have to laugh. Ramsay told Tanil she wasn't taking her job seriously. He called her work pathetic and crap. Those are really mean words, aren't they? That's when Tanili couldn't take it anymore. She got really, really mad. You upset now? Yeah, I'm fucking, I'm fucking glad off. you are. Cause you're crap. And it's like when you've been holding in your anger all day, and then you finally explode. And what did Ramsey do? You have to see this. Hey, madam, madam, get out. Yes, no problem, yeah. chef. Get he tells Tanil to leave the kitchen, but Tanili didn't go quietly. She kept yelling at Ramsey as she left. You. But it didn't stop there. Lying. You don't know shit! You're lying! You're busting my ass! Get off no, my back. back! Get off your Get back! Get off my back! She just couldn't stop. Finally, Ramsey told her to be quiet and behave. But here's the surprising part. He let her come back to the kitchen. I want an answer. I'm on my way back into the kitchen, Good. chef! Let's go! How did this happen? Well, Ramsey actually liked how passionate Tanil was about her cooking. Even though she yelled at him, he could see how much she cared about doing a good job. This argument actually helped Tanil become one of the top four chefs in the competition. Ramsay was proud of her for standing up for herself. This is one of the craziest things that's ever happened on the show. It just goes to show that sometimes, even when things seem really bad, they can turn out okay in the end. But this next fight that broke out literally made news all over town. I'm talking about the wild showdown between Jackie and Kristen in Season 15, Episode 9. The Red Team's dinner service was a disaster, and, no shocker, Ariel Malone was the first nominee. But hold on, Jackie Fuchs came out as the second nominee, and that was a total surprise, right? Now Kristen Barone spilled the tea saying they nominated Fuchs because she wasn't pulling her weight and they were done carrying her. Honestly, it was like watching a pot boil over. You knew it was coming, but you still couldn't look away. Oh, and it gets better. Fuchs and Barone went at it, 
and Ramsey dropped the bomb, calling the whole team a hot mess. The drama was through the roof. Can you imagine the tension in that kitchen? It must have been thick enough to cut with a knife. Hold on to your hats because the craziness didn't stop there. Everyone thought Ramsey was going to boot Jackie due to the higher chances. But surprise, it was Joe Ricci who got the axe. Talk about a plot twist. Just when you think you have Ramsey figured out, he goes and pulls something like this. But wait, there's more. Back in the dorms, a different kind of drama was brewing. Jackie couldn't digest the fact that she was seen as a weak link by her teammates. It's like adding fuel to an already blazing fire. And without any hesitation, she mocked Barone, trying to throw shade. This was Jackie's way of dealing with things, apparently. She asked Barone how it felt to be on the same level as her, someone who had just started cooking. Talk about a spicy turn of events. Can you imagine being in Barone's shoes? That kind of taunt would be enough to set anyone off. In case you're not in the loop, here's the scoop. Fuchs had a measly three months of experience, while Barone was rocking an impressive seven and a half months. Quite the contrast, huh? It's like comparing a novice to a seasoned pro, yet here they were, clashing like titans. But wait, it gets even more ridiculous. Fuchs boldly declared herself the strongest chef on the red team. Delusional much? It's one thing to be confident, but another to be completely out of touch with reality. That declaration probably had everyone rolling their eyes. Now, you can bet Barone wasn't just going to sit there and take it. Want to know what happened next? In three months, you don't know what the f you're doing. Everything about you is- Hold on tight because it gets even crazier. Fuchs had the nerve to ask Barone for her lighter in the middle of their argument. Like, seriously? After all that drama, did she really think Barone would just hand it over? No way. I wouldn't have given it to her either. Barone not only refused, but also threatened to hit her in the face if she tried to take the lighter without permission. Talk about raising the stakes. But that wasn't the end of it. Fuchs, being her usual self, started taunting Barone even more. She sure knew how to keep the drama going. And just when you think it can't get any more absurd, Fuchs pulled a stunt that left everyone speechless. Out of my Put your hands on me. <gasps> the lighter issue escalated into a huge argument, with Fuchs not only threatening Barone, but actually following through. After all the chaos, Barone had enough and stormed off the patio. Can you blame her? Sometimes you just have to walk away from the madness. Fuchs, in her twisted way, tried to downplay everything by saying she was just messing with Barone's head because she couldn't physically strangle her. And then, she called Barone crazy and deranged. The drama was endless. Crazy? Deranged? By the way, the red team had to deal with Fuchs and her antics for a few more days. But guess what? Episode 15 was the game changer. Fuchs got kicked out. Ramsey had finally had enough of her inconsistency and delightful attitude. It, it was time for someone to put an end to her chaos. Now, if you thought that was wild, wait till you hear what happened during the family steak night dinner in season 10. It was a complete circus. So, Robin Almodovar decided she was going to do things on her own schedule. She took her fish to the pass when Christina wasn't even close to being ready with the garnish. Meanwhile, over on the other side, Kimmy needed more time for her fillets. That's when all hell broke loose. Robin started arguing that Kimmy never gave her a heads up about the garnish situation. I guess Robin felt like she and Kimmy were on completely different pages, and she even suspected Kimmy of sabotaging her. Talk about kitchen paranoia. But guess what? Christina sided with Kimmy, pointing out that it was Robin who botched the communication. Christina, fuck it, fuck it. I'm with you. When are you gonna be ready, babe? To get to the bottom of it, Ramsey stepped in to inspect the fish Robin cooked and let me show you how terrible it was. 
It's got more fucking wrinkles on it than I have, and I'm 44 years of age. Classic Ramsey with his savage comments, some things never change. But here's the kicker. When Ramsey asked her when she cooked it, this was her answer. Seven minutes ago. Well, I took it out three minutes ago, so four minutes for it to cook, so seven minutes ago. Man, Ramsey was furious. He straight up tossed the fish into the trash and, no surprise, added that he wouldn't even feed it to his cat. Honestly, I think a cat's food looks more appetizing than her dish, just by the glance of it. Naturally, this led to some serious tension between Robin and Kimmy. They just couldn't sync their timings. Robin with her prematurely ready fish, and Kimmy still wrestling with her fillets. Ramsey was basically fed up with all the drama. In a heated moment, he called them aside to figure out what the heck was going on. Pasta ready. My fish is dying because of minutes. This entire fiasco was like watching a reality TV showdown, with egos clashing and tempers flaring. You couldn't script this level of chaos if you tried. But you won't believe what happened next. Instead of hashing it out calmly in front of Ramsey, they started bickering about the timings like a couple of alley cats. Ramsey was absolutely stunned into silence. I mean, come on, if you're going to argue in the middle of service, at least do it where the customers can't see you. The worst part, their squabbling caused the service to lag big time. With no other options, Ramsey had to bring in the remaining three guys from the red team to help. But guess what Robin and Kimmy were doing? Her count on the red for the second check is what fucked up my fifth. Yep, still bickering like two hens in a pecking order. When they dished out a cold hanger steak, that was the last straw for Ramsey. He had had enough and decided to take action. Here's how he handled it. Stone cold. Red team, you, 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 you. Honestly, I can't blame him. I wouldn't want to eat that steak either. Back in the dorms, Robin was on a roll, venting about Kimmy and stating how much she disliked her. Christina, fed up with Robin's drama, reached her breaking point. It's for dry because it's missed call. I'm fucking over it, dude. I'm over it. Christina had a real heart-to-heart -heart with Kimmy, and you could just feel the tension building up. Something crazy was about to happen. I can't even listen to Rock Cam. You could almost hear the dramatic music playing in the background. No surprise, Kimmy couldn't keep it in, and it escalated into a full-blown screaming match. All hell broke loose. Robin tried to put the blame on Christina, but Christina wasn't having any of it. She hit back like the boss she is. Like, I threw underneath the fucking I bus. started trouble? Christina wasn't about to shoulder unnecessary blame and stay silent, unlike some of the others. And guess what? If you thought the drama was over, you're in for a surprise. The showdown just wouldn't quit, almost turning into a wrestling match. You be cleaned out, bitch. You better fucking watch who you fucking call him, bitch. Wait a minute, ladies. We're in a cooking competition, not a WWE ring. Who would have thought it would get this intense, right? I get it, tempers run high in the kitchen, but there's a limit to how much drama one can take. Someone's gotta tell Robin to cool it, because if Kimmy throws a punch, those teeth might be at risk. Kimmy might be a sweetheart, but get her riled up, and that sweetness evaporates real quick. Thankfully, their teammates were quick to step in and separate them. Hit me, I bro, hit you. me, because hit I me, I you. I I fucking Close call. Without that timely intervention, they might have been both eliminated or, who knows, maybe even put behind bars. Honestly, it's a wonder they managed to stay in the competition as long as they did with all that drama. Sometimes, you just have to wonder if it's all worth it. Anyway, next on our list, I've got a really big moment. Sous Chef Scott gets super mad at a contestant who tried to do something he shouldn't. He didn't meet up to anybody's standards, not his own and not Chef Ramsay. So, here's what went down. It was season 7, episode 12, and Ramsay, the main chef, left the kitchen for a bit. He put sous chef Scott in charge. Now, when the big boss leaves, you know things might get a little crazy, right? Then this guy named Benjamin Knack shows up. He thought he was being clever, I guess. 
he tried to do Scott's job by saying what the next food order should be. This would be a good time to become a leader. Next pick up. Big mistake, Benjamin. Well, let me tell you, that was not a smart move at all. It's like Benjamin poked a sleeping bear or something. Chef Scott got really, really angry. He was so mad, I thought steam might come out of his ears. You may be a fucking good cook, but you Scott didn't waste any time. He walked right up to Benjamin, looking like he was ready for a fight. He started yelling at Benjamin for trying to be the boss. Benjamin, finally realizing he messed up big time, tried to back away. I think he wanted to disappear into the floor. But Scott wasn't done yet. No way! He got super close to Benjamin's face. I mean, they were almost nose to nose. Then Scott really let Benjamin have it. He yelled so loud, I bet they could hear him outside the kitchen. I know you can't get some fuck over there and don't ever! Chef Scott was so angry, it was kind of scary to see. I bet the other contestants were glad they weren't Benjamin right then. So, what did we learn from all this? It's pretty simple. Don't try to take over someone else's job in the kitchen, especially when that someone is Chef Scott. If you do, you're going to be in big trouble. It's just not worth it. Now, let's talk about two contestants who almost got into a real fight. In Season 12, Episode 3, something interesting happened. Both teams lost the challenge. This means they both had to pick three people from their team who did a bad job. It's like when your whole class gets in trouble and you have to decide who was the naughtiest. That's when things got really exciting. Everyone started talking about who did what wrong. The kitchen felt like it was full of angry bees. You could almost hear the buzzing. Chris wasn't being nice at all. My words, I'm not dead weight, guys. I guarantee fucking tea that. You can see him say something mean to Mike Aresta. He told Mike that all he did that night was put some salt and pepper on the fish. That's not very nice, is it? But Mike didn't just sit there and take it. No way. Wait, 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 I gotta, I gotta defend something. Mike talked back to Chris. He reminded Chris that Chris was the one who wanted to be in charge of the kitchen that night. It's like when your friend says you're bad at a game but you remind them that they chose to be team captain. Then, all of a sudden, Jason jumped into the argument. The first guy to leave. You know, that's not like one person just works than the other doesn't, you fucking idiot. He started telling everyone what he thought was really going on. He didn't try to make it sound nice. He just said what he thought was true. Things were getting so heated, it was like the kitchen was turning into a volcano about to explode. Chris then said they should blame Gabriel for not working hard enough. He said Gabriel did as little work as Chris himself did. But Gabriel didn't like that at all. Fucking crazy! You stood there like a bitch! While all this was happening, Jason got really, really mad. He couldn't take it anymore. Go back to the grocery store, motherfucker! Whoa-ho! He started yelling at Mike. This made everyone start shouting at each other. It was like a big, noisy argument where everyone was talking at once. Yes! No! Hey, hey, Mike! Just when it looked like Chris and Mike might start fighting for real, something amazing happened. All their teammates jumped in to stop them. They acted like referees in a boxing match, trying to keep the two angry cooks apart. It was a good thing they did, because who knows what might have happened if the fight got worse. This whole thing shows how stressful it can be on a cooking show. Sometimes, the heat in the kitchen isn't just from the stoves. But now, let's go back to the big fight that made Ramsey really, really mad. Jen is missing. Something happened on the blue team side and I wanna know. It was a super intense moment that you've gotta see. So, there's this contestant named Jen. She thought she was really good at making garnishes. You know, the extra stuff that makes food look pretty. But then, sous chef Jockey said her dish wasn't good. Poor Jen felt really bad about that. Executive chef for the past couple of years, so being a delegator and... But guess what? Jen didn't just stay quiet. No way. She decided to talk back to sous chef Jockey. Two, season. Then Ramsey, the main chef, called Jen over. 
he wanted her to make the dish again. But Jen wasn't happy about that. She started acting all grumpy towards Ramsey. Never been an issue for me. A little creamier. Yeah. I don't know. And boy, Jen just kept talking and talking. She didn't know when to stop. But the food had enough salt in it. But here's the funny part. Sous chef Jockey was actually right about Jen's dish not being good. What are you doing wrong now? Brett, watch those uh, shrimp. Is that what you just asked me? Then things got really crazy. One thing led to another, and suddenly, there was this huge fight. It was the biggest fight ever on Hell's Kitchen. You need more. Hey, hey, all of you run up here with me a minute. Jen started saying all sorts of mean things to Ramsey. She was blaming him for everything. Ramsey had to tell her to leave the show. But when Jen was leaving, she said she didn't feel sorry at all. She even made a joke about telling Ramsey to do something really silly with her blue chef jacket. But Ramsey always has something clever to say. He said that Jen blamed him for messing things up, but really, it was her bad cooking that messed things up. That's so like Ramsey. He always has the last word. But this next contestant couldn't keep his mouth shut and landed himself and his teammates in a rut. I'm talking about that one contestant who drove everyone, including Ramsey, absolutely nuts. The one and only Raj Branston. In the paramedic service challenge, things got spicy when Raj served Ramsey a rather disappointing dish. Gotta get this out. No, an ounce of seasoning. Yep, the scrambled eggs had absolutely no seasoning whatsoever. It's always the seasoning. Ramsey was so dismayed that he made the whole blue team suffer. Nope, he didn't kick them out. Instead, he demanded that each and every one of them taste Raj's dish. All of you, come here, quick! Hurry up! Get out of the way, get out of the way. Ooh, get out of the way. Taste it! Taste it! Taste it, taste it, taste it, taste it! But Raj wasn't gonna go down quietly. For do it again. Don't argue with Chef! Don't talk back to Chef. He says something, you say yes, Chef, and move on. That's it. Yep. He got into a heated argument, stormed off, and this time, it was Ramsey's turn to get him back. I tried to make some sense out of this intense chaos. I gotta cool off somehow. I tried to clear my head by sticking my head in the refrigerator, but I couldn't. Raj, move your f***ing ass! To add to the chaos, the team lost, and Raj's attempt to stand up for himself was squashed by Trev. You suck! And you tanked us. You guys gonna keep going with it? Yes! You Till it gets it through that thick skull of yours! As for the punishments, well, they had to tackle the colossal task of cleaning both kitchens and polishing a staggering 250 stemware glasses. Now, that's what I call a kitchen nightmare. Wrong show, I know, but still. Before the punishment commenced, Ramsey asked the blue team where they'd gone wrong. While Trev blamed the lack of teamwork, Raj had something else to say. Well, I tried to, but everybody just went ahead and did their own thing anyway. Raj's statement left Trev infuriated. And in seconds, the entire situation escalated. And that's what you guys did. Stop! No. He's basically screaming at us to get together as a team, and it's a bunch of individuals still. Let's cut to the punishment. Raj was putting in all the effort he could. That is, if you count doing absolutely nothing as hard work. One chef is just hanging around. Don't be scared, Raj, jump in. It was. Everybody's polishing, you're just kind of standing, you're blowing it with me. The one guy that had your back. But Trev wasn't having any of it. He pushed Raj to join, but Raj thought Trev was being unfair and felt isolated from the rest of the team. To make matters worse, Trev noticed Raj had left watermarks on one of the glasses, only adding to the tension among them. Raj, seriously, I mean, can you not see that? Are you gonna look? Just do his glasses over. Later, while they were scrubbing the red kitchen down, tensions reached a boiling point. Trev spotted Raj partially covering a loaf of bread with plastic wrap, and that only frustrated him even more. Aside from sleeping and f***ing eating and running your damn jaw, you gotta be good at something. Mister, I'm a chef and I'm almost 50. I got more experience than everybody. The rest of the blue team was also reaching their limit. Case in point, Vinny gave everybody a piece of his mind without any hesitation. You might have been cooking the longest. Obviously, you cooked in shit restaurants for the last 30 years. Raj felt targeted and accused the team of unfairness, prompting Trev to explode with bitterness. Just go home. Go home and stuff yourself with Twinkies so you have a deck on your recliner. Well, what do you think happened next? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! 
for one. Guys, guys, guys. Says, shut up! The confrontation escalated, and Raj was yelling inches away from Trev's face, calling everyone on the team snakes. That's when Boris and Russell intervened, pulling Raj aside, urging him to calm down with some Tai Chi. Despite being on the winning team, Raj was eliminated due to his consistent poor performance in the first three services, and being clearly outmatched in the competition. And as much as I love Raj, there's a grain of truth in all this. Raj was pretty much disliked by all his teammates, but some contestants just couldn't see eye to eye. Take Elise and Carrie, for example. They were the perfect pair. If perfect means constant clashes, finding reasons to argue over every single move in the kitchen, and, well, whatever this is. I'm talking about the fourth dinner service, when Elise found herself alongside Jamie on the fish station. There was a ton of pressure coming from the chef's table because of how close it was. And Elise knew it. But she was confident because Carrie wasn't handling the meat. Elise called out her scallops, but when they reached the pass, this is how they turned out. They're rubbery, they're watery. Christ. Wake up, Elise. Yes. Yep, not so great. Obviously, Ramsay wasn't impressed, and boy, did he have a few words to share. So, don't turn them till they're nice and golden. Ramsay had to demonstrate the right way to cook them. But thankfully, in no small part due to Ramsay's intervention, her second attempt was a success. But later, Elise called out to Carrie, telling her that her scallops were ready. But Elizabeth was lagging behind with her appetizers, leaving Elise frustrated. I'm walking with scallops! No, don't! No. Wow. Carrie called it and said we were ready to go up! When Elizabeth and Carrie were finally ready to send up their appetizers, Elise had to start her scallops over. Carrie urged her to hurry, but Elise still needed seven minutes, despite Gina already getting her New York strip ready. When she finally sent her sea bass to the pass, one piece was raw and the other was dry. Ramsay ordered her to fix it immediately, but for some reason, Elise simply couldn't snap out of it, and eventually, the red team was kicked out. Shut it down! Elise practically carried her team to an embarrassment of a service. But in the end, both teams ended up as joint losers, and each of them had to nominate two members apiece. But that wasn't nearly the end of it. Except we were waiting on Carrie Caesar sauce, then he was sending people to help her toss salads out. Elise, I it's the truth! Elise decided to blame everyone on her team for screwing up the service. But Carrie wasn't having any of it, accusing Elise of throwing her under the bus for slow tableside work during the second service. Well, it was clear that they were gearing up for a massive showdown. You weren't running your mouth all the time. Ha! Whatever. Mouth. Carrie claimed the red team would have been better off without Elise constantly yapping. And she declared war. And Elise was all in. They went at it, with Elise highlighting Carrie's weaknesses and boasting about her meat station skills. Well, Carrie pointed out how disrespectful Elise was. In a word, it wasn't a pretty sight. I'm talking! I'm, I'm talking! Shut up! I'm, I'm talking! Loda. I'm talking! I'm tired of hearing you the talk! The second That's service, you, you weren't in the kitchen, I ran the meat station, and we ran to victory! During the elimination, Elise found herself nominated by her team, with Carrie being right behind her. They were joined by Chino and Monterey from the blue team. And if you thought they had the good sense to set their differences aside for like five seconds, then you're dead wrong. I have stepped up my game every service, every challenge. I've gotten better. If you ask my team who they'd rather see lead between me and Carrie, I'm sure the answer will be Carrie. Carrie accused Elise of not being a team player, while Elise interrupted by saying she had improved and believed her teammates would rather see Carrie go home than her. Ramsey seized this opportunity and asked the red team who they preferred to eliminate between Elise and Carrie. To Elise's dismay, everyone, including Natalie from the blue team to add insult to injury, voted against her. The team wanted her out, but Elise, in a desperate attempt, vowed to never repeat her mistakes again. She insisted she wasn't there to throw anyone under the bus, although Monterey's reaction said other. I'm keeping That's it 100% with you, chef. I can work on my attitude. Elise acknowledged she needed to work on her attitude and took a final shot at Carrie, saying common sense couldn't be acquired at 31. Yeah. Elise broke down in tears, but Ramsey sternly asked her to stop crying. 
and saved her from elimination for the time being. Yes, Elise did have a burning passion. If by passion, you mean anger. I learned tonight that I don't have any friends in the house. They don't know who they f***ing with. But here comes a contestant whose anger was fueled by jealousy. Meet Ralph, who was known to keep things together, but when he saw his rival living the winner's life, his jealousy finally got the better of him. During the leftovers challenge, Ralph went all out, trying to squeeze out every bit of flavor he could, while Elsie couldn't help but notice. Ralph, he's got all these pans going, and I'm just throwing in my stuff, you know, into my pot, making my chicken soup. His kitchen was filled with pans, contrasting her laid-back approach of just throwing ingredients into her pot. When Ralph presented his sautéed chicken drumsticks with thyme sauce to Ramsay, it looked like it came straight out of a restaurant. But something ruined his creation. Unfortunately, the raw onion is very, very crunchy. Um, not a clever utilization of the ingredients. Barely one third. And the results? That person is... Elsie. The losing out to Elsie, who wasn't a professional chef, hit Ralph hard. He was so jealous, he practically drooled over her winning chicken soup. Very exciting. I'm thrilled. Don't forget your knives. I won't, chef. Frustration got the better of him, and you could definitely see his annoyance leaking out. Later, Elsie's casual remark about the challenge being better than prep work struck a bit of a nerve. You know, bad for Ralph, good for Elsie. She's gonna go play with somebody with the knives tomorrow. Uh, good for her. You see, Ralph hadn't clinched a single victory yet, and this was a bit of a sore point for him. But that was just the beginning of the drama. Ralph's punishment was to prep the kitchen for the night's service. He mistakenly thought Elsie was cooking for the governor, but sous chef Marianne set him straight, mentioning they lacked a good schnitzel recipe. To add insult to injury, Ralph had to watch Elsie's appearance on Good Day Live, which only fueled that frustration of his even further. Good Day Live! Ah! Killing me now! Yeah, I should have won it, Ralph. He couldn't help but wonder how she bagged such a cool reward. When Elsie returned from her reward, you have to see how Ralph greeted her. Hey, did you see her? We did. Yes, yeah. as a matter of fact, we did tune in. What do you think? It was excellent. Ralph couldn't hide his annoyance. His smile was absolutely plastic when he said they watched her. Drama was definitely on the menu that night. If you ask me, I think Ralph should have channeled that energy into improving his own dish instead of getting worked up over others' victories. But now, let's move on to season 19, when two contestants were always at each other's throats. We're talking about Mark and Declan here. So what happened is, in episode three, tensions were running high in the dorms. Mark, who was determined to get the men back on track after losing two members, passionately stated that they had to win the following day. However, Declan made a witty remark, and you have to hear it to believe it. We gotta win tomorrow, like flash straight up, man. We have to win. If we can, that, that, that speaks to all of us, man. Think about it. And this was just the beginning of the clash between them. To make things worse, Declan accused him of having a Napoleon complex, while Josh anticipated Mark exploding at any moment. Stop the dick swinging, dude. I get it. Man, Mark is just intense. Man, I feel like I could shake you up and you just pop open like sodas. Amidst the chaos, Mark's earlier decree seemed almost comical, leaving Declan feeling like a monkey riding a bicycle inside his head. Ah, same old, same old drama in the dorms, as per usual. But that was just a glimpse of their bickering. In the aftermath of the wedding brunch service challenge in episode 4, tensions escalated further when the blue team faced a humiliating defeat. Declan declared he would take charge of the blue kitchen, but his authority was quickly challenged when he was reminded of his overcooked egg blunder. I'm taking lead of this kitchen for all services. You can't cook an egg. Oh yeah, I can't. Cook that uh, egg. Handle yeah. yourself. Hard boiled. Call a ticket. Ridiculous. We're in the dining room. Represent ourselves. And what happened next? Well, take a guess. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, this, you listen to me, dude. This, no, you. We're not no, you can kiss my ass. We're in the dining room. We are. We're in the dining room. Both stop right now. Both of you stop. 
A heated argument ensued, with Peter and Cody attempting to mediate, reminding them about the couples that were watching in the dining room. The blue team's punishment involved making 1,600 cupcakes for the wedding couples. Back in the dorms, Mark asserted his leadership skills, refusing to take a backseat to anyone. He confronted Declan on the patio, refusing to respect his authority. Let me tell you, it was a showdown worth watching. Declan, I'm gonna stand behind you. Or, or take command from you, ain't gonna happen. I'm here to win. I don't look up to you, I don't, I look at you. Their argument reached a boiling point when Declan accused Mark of disrespect and Mark dismissed his words as mere barking. Sit down. You're up in my face, I'm sitting and sitting down. Okay. You're like that. So that's twice you've disrespected me. Come at me again and you're gonna see the knuckle sandwich. Well, it's crazy how even the best chefs succumb to anger. And even Chef T, the absolute pro she is, fell victim to it too. Let's go on fire right now. Oh my god, I fucking set the whole flat top on fire. During the homecoming planning challenge, T teamed up with Allison to create a seafood appetizer, opting for classic shrimp and grits. They believe that loading their dishes with meat and grease would win over the high school kids. Together, they presented jalapeno grits with cheddar cheese and lobster. While Abigail and Georgia praised the sauce in presentation, Max criticized the grits for being watery and salty. You could tell how visibly upset T was. That salty bullshit. My dish was delicious. The round was entirely Millie's. Tough break. During the punishment, the red team was tasked with decorating the dining room and stringing 200 bead necklaces based on the committee's directions. However, when Michelle was trying to be friendly with the committee, T was brewing with frustration. Michelle is trying to be friends with them high school kids. I was like the decorating queen in high school. It's annoying! But here comes the interesting part. Did you hear that? Yeah, did you? Michelle just needs to shut the f up, that's it. She's so worried about what I'm doing. Yep, T wasn't gonna sit by and watch. She confronted Michelle and told her something pretty unexpected. Please <laughs> stop pointing me out. Do not call my name for the rest of the day. I that's all I'm sure you heard. I it. It's a small ass you... dining room. But guess what? The tension was only gonna escalate further because Michelle asked her to help Megan on the necklaces, leading to yet another heated argument. No, you're not gonna pass Start me off for no beads. That look like the bead fairy. Well, no, you're gonna I think get you're pissy because you're we're just beat. trying to communicate. Just be quiet. Well, you, Michelle. No, stop fucking telling me to shut up, T. I'm gonna hit you over the fucking head. That's when Michelle warned T to calm down or face the consequences. As service approached, Ramsey inquired about T's experience with the committee. T responded diplomatically, but Ramsey saw right through her facade, understanding the true frustration that lay beneath. Tell me the real deal. You need to wring their neck, right? <laughs> but this next contestant drove both chefs and fans crazy. Yeah. Her stupidity transcended the fourth wall, and she clearly pushed Robert to his limits too. In episode seven, the blue team lost the leftovers challenge and had to prepare both kitchens for the night service, along with polishing the tapa plates. During the punishment, Lacey struggled to figure out where to put the plates, despite Robert's instructions to take them outside for polishing. Like, girl, are you dumb or just overacting? Either way, not a good look. But tempers flared when Robert pointed out her mistake with the oven tray, leading to a, say it with me now, heated argument. You're not supposed to do that, Lacey. Then I f***ed up, then it's not your fucking problem. You need problem. to stop right now and listen to what we're trying to tell you. Poor Robert was beyond frustrated with Lacey. Sick of Lacey, I'm about to use a Jedi mind trick and just choke the shit out of that bitch mentally. You see, Lacey had a talent for getting under everyone's skin. Despite her own perception of being something of a perfectionist, she couldn't resist clashing with others, creating constant tension in and out of the kitchen. Even Jay and Danny tried to defend Robert, reminding Lacey he was just trying to help. But the tension continued as Robert openly expressed his one true desire. That just gotta go, man. Lacey, in turn, decided to clap back. If I fight with anybody right now, I'm leaving, I swear to God. You're what? You're, You're leaving? Last. Robert was so pissed that he suggested she needed therapy in a psychiatric ward. Hell's Kitchen was definitely living up to its intense reputation that day. 
in yet another unfortunate turn of events, the blue team lost the service too. And as you could probably guess, Robert nominated Lacey. And that wasn't all. He had a lot to share. You've done a great job. I'm not taking that away from you, but I'm constantly stressed with dealing with your fing emotional shit. And what was Lacey's reaction? Well, if what happened before the service wasn't enough indication, let me show you. Blabbed your shit to me. The argument seemed endless because once again, Robert was back with all of his fury. That you gave a fuck since you've been here. The first so thing you fucking game. left your team up there while they're busting their ass. Lacey is not a team player. Robert stated that he wanted Lacey gone due to her earlier threat to quit which emphasized her lack of commitment. When Ramsey asked him how it felt to get that rant of his off his chest, Robert admitted it felt good. He sure did look relieved. Eventually, both of them survived elimination, but that doesn't mean they didn't carry their hatred forward. Well, Lacey didn't give a damn about Robert. This is what he had to say about her. She's like the Teflon Don, nothing can touch that bitch, but eventually her luck's gonna run out. But this next chef had an attitude that rubbed everyone the wrong way. Billy, 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 Billy. During the emergency workers' breakfast service challenge, Billy and Sakari were trying to hold it together at the appetizer station. But in reality, it was a mess. When Alejandro messed up a steak, Billy didn't hold back from calling him out. Alejandro, just get it right. Over, under, like, what the f It's breakfast. The blue team ended up losing, landing them in a trash sorting punishment, a task that clearly didn't sit well with Billy. I love fish and whatnot, but man. Oh. <laughs> he had a messy day and even managed to get garbage in his shoes. It was clear his frustration was at its peak. <laughs> Billy, it wasn't on purpose, dude. Bro, come on. During the punishment, Billy's frustration boiled over. And you won't believe how he treated Alex. You get in the fish guts, bro, like we've been. Oh my god. Billy just doesn't quit. He just does not quit. Billy just stop talking. Shut the up, Billy. Go. Barked at Alex to pitch in, which only got on everyone's nerves. Billy couldn't help but mockingly label Alex Tim the Tool Man for trying to take it easy. This is when Abe laid into him for his constant complaining. Just keep it quiet, brother. This is brutal over here. I don't care. Y'all want to get on the switch out? Come on. I mean, I'm not no carpenter. But he still wouldn't shut up. Yo, home improvement. We almost there. Shut up, Billy. Abe was right. Billy's attitude was costing him support from the entire team. And as you know, Hell's Kitchen is truly hell, without the support of your team anyway. So can you think of more times when chefs lost it on Hell's Kitchen? Make sure to share your favorite moment in the comments below. And before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.